In this video, we're going to talk about how to make an LED light emitting diode blink in circuit. And we'll be using the 555 timer as the main element in this circuit. Pins 1 through 4 are on the left. These include the ground pin, the trigger pin, the output, and the reset. And pins 5 through 8 are on the right side. Now, in this experiment, we're not going to be using pin number 5, the control voltage pin. Now this pin is useful if you want to create a voltage control oscillator, which I do have another video on that. And I'll be posting the link in the description section below for those of you who want to see how to make a voltage control oscillator using the LED blinking circuit. So let's get started. The first thing we need is the 555 timer. Then we need three resistors. I mean, let me take that back, two resistors. Here's the first one. The second one is going to be in series with the first one, and that is going to be in series with a capacitor. Now the negative terminal of the capacitor will be connected to the ground, which is also connected to pin number one. That's the ground pin of the 555 timer. So let's call this R1, and this is going to be R2. So between C1 and R2, we're going to attach that point to two pins, pin number six and pin number two. So pin number two is the trigger pin, pin number six is the threshold pin. Between R1 and R2, we're going to attach that to pin number seven, the threshold pin, I mean the discharge pin. Now the other part of R1 is going to be go into positive ECC. This will be the positive terminal of a battery if you're using the battery as a voltage source. I'm going to set the voltage to, in this circuit, 5.5 volts. So attached to the positive terminal of the battery, we have pin number 8 and pin number 4. Pin number 8 is the VCC pin, pin number 4 is the reset pin. The output pin is pin number 3. And this circuit will give us a rectangular output signal. The frequency of the rectangular wave is going to be 1.44. This is the theoretical frequency. The actual frequency typically tends to deviate from the theoretical frequency. But it's going to be 1.44 divided by R1 plus 2R2 times C1. So what we need to understand is that if you increase the value of R1, the frequency is going to decrease. So the rate at which the LED will flash will decrease. And we're going to add the LED to the circuit soon. If you increase C1, the same thing will happen. The frequency will decrease. Likewise, the reverse is true. If you decrease R1 or decrease C1, the frequency is going to go up. Now, in the demonstration that I had at the beginning of this video, attached to pin 3 is the LED. And then attached to that is a resistor. So in that circuit, I use a 510 ohm resistor and a green LED with a voltage drop of about 2 volts. Now, R1 was set to 1 mega ohm and R2 that was also set to 1 mega ohm and C1 was 0.2 microfarads and so those are the values that I've used to make the circuit that you saw at the beginning of this video. Now it's important for you to understand that the rate at which the LED flashes is proportional to the frequency of the output. So as you decrease R1, the frequency at the output increases. So the flash rate, which I'm going to call FR, that is going to go up. It's going to flash faster. If you were to increase C1 or increase R1, the frequency will decrease and the flash rate will decrease. It's going to flash slower. Now, the second thing you want to keep in mind is the duty cycle. 
the duty cycle tells you the ratio of time in terms of when the LED is on and when it is off. So let me give you two different waveforms. So here is the first waveform. So during this part, the LED is on. And during this part here, it's off. So notice that the time that it's on and the time that it's off is approximately the same. So let's say that it's on for 10 milliseconds and it's off for 10 milliseconds. Let's call this T1 and this T2. T1 is known as the pulse width. T2 is the space width. The sum of these two times is the cycle time. The duty cycle is the ratio between the pulse width, that's T1, divided by the cycle time, times 100%. So that's going to be 10 milliseconds over 20 milliseconds. So the duty cycle is 50% in this example. So the LED is on 50% of the time. Now let's compare that to another type of waveform. So let's say we have a waveform that looks like this. So the duty cycle is going to be different. So this is when the LED is on, and this is when it's off. So let's say this is 20 milliseconds, and this is 5. In this case, the duty cycle will be 20 over 25 times 100%. So the duty cycle is 80% which means that the LED will be on 80% of the time and off 20% of the time. So not only can you adjust the flash rate of the LED, you can adjust how long it's on compared to how long it's off. The two times doesn't have to be the same. They can be different. Now, the values that affect the duty cycle are R1 and R2. So here's the formula for the duty cycle. It's equal to R1 plus R2 over R1 plus 2 times R2, times 100%. If you want a duty cycle of approximately 100%, you want R1 to be very high, R2 to be very low. If R1 is 100 times more than R2, you can achieve a duty cycle of close to 100%. It's probably going to be like 99%. Now, the flip side is if R2 is 100 times larger than R1, let's say if R2 was 100 kilo ohms and R1 was 1 kilo ohm, your duty cycle will be approximately 50%. If R1 is small, these two will cancel. You get 1 R2 over 2 R2, which is about a half. That'll give you a duty cycle 50%, which means the LED will be on half the time, off half the time. But if R2 is small and R1 is large, these two become insignificant. You get 1 over 1, so it's approximately on 99 or 100% of the time. In this case, the LED will appear as if it's not blinking. It will appear as if it's staying on because it will be off for a very, very brief period of time. Now, what we're about to do at this point is we're going to watch a demonstration that really highlights the duty cycle of this particular circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change R2 to 2 mega ohms instead of 1 mega ohm. And I'm going to change C1 to 1 microfarad. Increasing the capacitance of C1 will decrease the flash rate. And so when it flashes slower, you could see that the LED will be on longer than it is off. But let's calculate the values for this circuit. So the theoretical frequency should be 1.44 divided by R1, which is 1 mega ohm, plus 2 times R2, that's 2 times 2 mega ohms, so that's a total of 5 mega ohms. Thus, that's 5 times 10 to the 6, times a 1 microfarad capacitor, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 6. So that basically becomes 1.44 divided by 5. 10 to the 6 and 10 to the minus 6 cancels. So the frequency is 0.288 hertz. So it's very slow. The cycle time is 1 over the frequency. It's 1 over f. 1 over 0 
is 3.47 seconds. So that's going to be the cycle time for this circuit. So between when the LED first turn on and when it turns on again, it's going to be approximately three and a half seconds for that to happen. Now let's calculate the duty cycle. So it's going to be 1M plus 2M and then 1M plus 2 times 2M times 100%. So that's 3 mega ohms divided by 5 mega ohms times 100%. 3 over 5 is 0.6 times 100%, that's 60%. So the duty cycle is 60%. What this means is that the LED will be on 60% of the time, but it's going to be off 40% of the time. So in this demonstration, note that the LED is going to be on longer than the time that it will be off. So as was evident in that last demonstration, we saw that increase in the capacitance of C1 decreased the flash rate of the LED. And we can see that the duty cycle of 60% caused the LED to be on for a longer period of time than it was in the off state. Now let's talk about some other things that we can do with this circuit. Because right now, the output that we have is a DC voltage and not an AC voltage. When the pulse comes in, current will flow from pin 3 through the LED back to ground. And this is conventional current. Keep in mind, electron flow is in the opposite direction. Now let's talk about using two LEDs that will blink in different times. When one is on, the other will be off. And here's how we can make that circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a resistor. And we're going to have a capacitor. And then we're going to have two light emitting diodes. This is a simple way to convert a DC signal into an AC signal. It's not a sine wave but you get an AC signal in the sense that current is flowing in both directions, just not at the same time. So I'm still going to use the 510 ohm resistor. I'm going to have a green LED and a red LED. This is going to be a 10 kilo ohm resistor, and this is a 1000 microfarad capacitor with a maximum voltage of 16 volts. As you saw in that last demonstration, both the green and the red LED were flashing at, at the same flash rate but at different times. When the green LED was on, the red LED was off, and vice versa. Now let's talk about why that's the case. So during this part, when the voltage at pin 3 is high, we'll call that the on state, current is going to flow through the 10 kilo ohm resistor, but it's also going to charge this 1000 microfarad capacitor. And as it charges it, there's going to be a current flowing through the green LED. And so while that capacitor, which we'll call C2, is being charged, the green LED is on. Now, once output 3 goes into its low voltage state, that is during this part of the rectangular wave, when it's off, the capacitor, now that it's charged, will begin to discharge through the 10 kilo ohm resistor. So current will flow through the 10 kilo ohm resistor in this direction through the 510 ohm resistor through the red LED back to the capacitor. So now the red LED is on. And so we have this reversal of current due to the fact that the capacitor is charging and discharging. 
So we had an output DC voltage. Now we have an output AC voltage in the sense that we get that reversal of current. So when a capacitor is charging from the 555 timer, the green LED is on. When the 555 timer is off, that is when output 3 is off, C2 is now discharging. And as it discharges, the red LED is on. So that's how you can create that particular blinking circuit with the 555 timer. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to create an LED blinking circuit using this particular integrated circuit. Thanks for watching.